Hello, hello, brothers and sisters. It's a new week. I'm Prince Ojong, your host. I'm very happy and humble to bring you a new show, Speak of Africa. We've told you before, we started this show because we wanted to give a voice to the voiceless, Africans who are invisible, Africans who are never seen. We wanted to make sure that whatever you're thinking, the world should know about it. And I think we are proud to say we are achieving our goal because whenever you tell us what to do, for example, you choose subjects that we should speak on, we speak on what you want, and we'll take a message. Like, for example, in the White House, people are listening to you. In Russia, people are listening to you. In France, people are listening to you. In Britain, they are listening to you. In China, Xi Jinping is listening to you. So we're taking your message and we're spreading it. And this is why African dictators are shaking in their boots. Our message is shaking them up. And we're just laughing because these guys are like thieves. Just like you say in Yoruba, ole, ole, ole. These people don't want to be called out. When you start shouting, thief man, thief man, thief man, they get nervous. And that's what the show is doing. The show is intended as a roll call. You call out those dictators who are thieves in their countries. So we're calling them out. For the show of today, we want to say thank you because you watched the last video. You made a lot of comments and we're very, very happy. Our producer also tried to translate some of the comments so that they, they were in English. Most of you don't read French, so I know those comments help you a lot. So I'm going to ask him to continue helping us to give some translation when we have French words. So we say thank you to our producer and we also say thank you to you because you were very engaged. The purpose of this show is to be your voice, okay? So how was the week in Africa? Well, in Africa, there are two subjects that remain dominant. We produce this show based on the feedback that we get from you. From the feedback we get from you, you guys were really consumed by the Paris Olympics, the Olympic Games that is taking place in Paris. A lot of you are watching. A lot of the African presidents are there. We see pictures of Chantal Bia, Paul Bia, and the other guys. They were right at the fore. Then, of course, we see uh, the mayor of Paris right at the front, the River Seine. You see them testing it to make sure that the river is clean. Then, of course, Emmanuel Macron was not able to come to the river to test it for cleanliness. He received uh, the dictator, uh, Paul Bia. They had a tete a tete on how to consolidate uh, the fr French plantation in Cameroon. Then, of course, the migrants and the homeless in Paris. Well, there were bosses. There were bosses that were taking these people away from Paris because they do not want most of the guys coming to this event to see the homeless people and the migrants. Most of these people were bossed very far out of Paris. Okay? So they were surprised that they were taking them away from their normal habitat. But that's what really happened. So the Olympic Games continues until the end of probably 11th of August. The Olympic Games, as we say, is a very popular sport. It dates back to ancient Greece, those who know history. We had the Olympic Games in Olympia. You know the god Zaios. That was part of, uh, the, the game always had a religious element in addition to the athletic element. But today, the religious element is lost. Much of what is celebrated is the athletic element. So that's one theme which is dominant in the African news cycle. The other theme that is dominant in the African news cycle is the Joe Biden, Donald Trump debate. And I'm going to continue to move until we get the total ban on the, 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 the total initiative relative to what we're going to do with more border patrol and more uh, asylum officers. President Trump? Uh, I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. Look. This debate is a fixture. You guys continue talking about it. So we're going to frame our show of today by revisiting the video of the debate between President Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Of course, during this debate, 
the general public assume that Joe Biden did not do himself a favor. This debate made abundantly clear to the average American that Joe Biden was not fit for the job. For one, they assume that if they had any misgivings about the age, the old age of Joe Biden, the debate made this abundantly clear. If they had any issues with the health of Joe Biden, this debate made things abundantly clear. As a result, the Democratic Party started talking about the need for Biden to drop out of the race and pass the torch to a new generation. For weeks, Joe Biden wrestled with this problem. Eventually, he was torn between two things. He was in a dilemma. National interests versus personal interests or ambition. What should take precedence? Eventually, after Joe Biden wrestled with this problem, he made the right decision. He decided that his interest or his ambition to run for a second term should not supersede the national interest of the United States. Democracy is at stake. If America has to remain a democratic nation, according to Joe Biden, he needed to get somebody who can defeat R Donald Trump because Donald Trump is perceived to be a loose cannon who doesn't believe in the rule of law. Donald Trump probably would take America back to a banana republic of zombies as it obtains in much of Africa. So the average American does not want that. They want America to remain a country of laws. So they fought very hard to show proof to Joe Biden that because of his insistence to remain president, the voters were leaving the Democratic Party and going to Trump. Eventually, when he saw the writing on the wall, he made the pain, painful decision to drop out of the race and endorse his vice president, Kamala Harris. As a result, the voters responded enthusiastically. They started pouring money and support to the campaign of Kamala Harris. When we look at this in an African context, you guys are asking me, Prince Ojong, why can African presidents not emulate the excellence of Joe Biden? That's the question of today. Because when you look at the African landscape, a lot of these African presidents are sit tight presidents. Even though they are old, even though they are sick, they don't want to live. They want to rule forever. They want to die in power. They want to be live presidents. They don't really care about their countries. Because they want to stay in power forever, they, they tend to break constitutional law, do illegal things, kill people, just because of the ambition to stay in power. They know all these things are not good for the country, but they do them anywhere because of personal ambition. So most of these presidents have what I call volcanic ambition. It's like a volcano. They don't care what they spit out. It can kill a lot of people, so be it. And we're starting today taking you straight to Cameroon. Paul Bia has been there for so long, for over 42 years as president, yet he doesn't want to leave. He's over 92 years old, yet he doesn't want to leave. He's very sick, cancer, and many other diseases. He doesn't want to leave. Okay? So this is what is happening. If he doesn't want to leave, then you can see why fire is burning in his country. You see the issue with Ambazonia. Two young drug traffickers, male and female, were yesterday apprehended selling drugs. They were apprehended selling drugs to their mother at Church Street, Fiango, Kumbatu subdivision, by the Muslim and Christian women of the Wuza Quarters neighborhood and later on conveyed to the Kumba Central Police Station. This was during the fifth phase of the war against drug abuse. The women carrying placards proceeded first to Cameroon Street, threatening traffickers after evident samples of drugs. This one is Tramadol. This one is Banga. 
Accusations such as Mary Joanna, Kayu, syringes, with the latter who denied the accusation. Are you saying the women proceeded with the destruction and burning of their hideout, given the devastations caused on their health. All we are the all don't turn a fool then. With the Christ in me finish. Someone they don't deny school then, they go school then. You want to sleep on night, the end of your house on knife. Show you knife, more give all things for this. Boys are not going to leave banga for that. They're not going to leave cocaine, leave tramadol. Every day you want to sleep, leave separate or door, they pick up. You want to walk up on night with your poster for hand, they draw them. They, they drop people with their poster, they carry people their ID card, they work on a police or worry for the road because of ID card in the name of junkies. Causing the mental damage with education being a thing of the past. Our children have spoiled because of all those things. And we are crying, we are begging the government to help us to stop all this nonsense. We need fight for our picking them. Send me them leave this banger and cocaine. We don't want cocaine again. As a result of the fight, many drug addicts and traffickers have fled to unknown destinations with many languishing in prison. The women are therefore calling on the government of Cameroon to continue seeking lasting solution in the fight against drug abuse so to have a sane society free from drugs. Ambazonia is happening because the people are, are tired. We've been singing the song of Ambazonia on this show every week. You know it. Why? Because the people are tired of Paul Bia's dictatorship. He doesn't want to leave even though he knows it will be good for his country. If he leaves, he doesn't want to leave. Then of course he gets his tribesmen to support him so that he can stay in power forever. But is this good for Cameroon? We don't think so. Now, the people in Francophone areas supporting somebody like Paul Bia. This week, you brought to my attention the repatriation, the kidnap and repatriation of some Cameroonians. One, a guy called Remain Cotter. He was a whistleblower and critic of the Bia regime from Gabon. Olingin Gema, send him to the lion's den in the Republic so that they can torture and kill him. This is sad. That's Olingin Gemma's own way of cutting favor with uh, Bia because after that, the coup d'etat, he fell out of favor with a lot of African presidents. So he is looking for a way to win the hearts of uh, those presidents. So he's using Ramon Kotana just like uh, a, 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 what they call uh, a ploy. So it's just like a toy in his game. Okay? You can see a lot of pictures of Ramon Cota from his uh, TikTok page. I'm sharing some of the pictures so you can see. Finally, they humiliated him to make him uh, confess and say, I'm sorry oh, I did this to my father president. But is this a good way to treat somebody who is criticizing, somebody who wants change to happen in his country? We don't think so. So it's not only Ramon Cota. We also have another young person. You guys have sent me so many pictures of this young person. His name is uh, Junior Ngombe. This young guy has uh, high school education. After high school, he's not been able to do something good for himself. So he manages life in Douala just by cutting hair. Can you imagine? After you graduate from high school, the best you can do with your life is to cut hair. Yet, the young guy is cutting hair and complaining about the lack of opportunities in La Republique du Cameroon. You have uh, what they call grand école uh, uh, schools, where in order to go to those schools, you have to bribe. If you don't know somebody, you cannot even bribe. And now, and now those are some of those uh, what they call grand école. I don't know what is grand about them. They don't really teach anything. Back in the days, I refused to go to any of those grand école because I knew that the academics in those places, very weak. They are not really teaching them anything serious. What are they learning in administration? They just learn to become thieves. So those are schools where they train thieves. They train people who take bribes. So a young guy like this probably will need a godfather so that he can go to an arm. But if you don't have a godfather, 
you will not be able to go to Enam. And that's uh, the sad fate of most of these uh, guys, like Junior Ngombe. Junior Ngombe made a video, and he even talked about uh, the kidnapping of uh, Ramon Kota from Gabon to Cameroon. Then the BR regime sent uh, Secret Service guys to come and pick up this young kid from his house just because he was complaining about lack of opportunities in Cameroon. What he's complaining about is enshrined in the Cameroon constitution. Only in a, a banana republic will you arrest a young man for speaking the truth about what is happening in the country. So when Paul Bia says there is uh, freedom of speech in Cameroon, the example of Jinion Ngombe tells you this is a big lie. And we're sharing this video so that you can see it. Even Akere Muna came out to support this young man. And the guy is getting a lot of support. He's garnering support from many quarters. Kawala, a lot of the other politicians, they are supporting Junior Ngombe. Because they've seen that what they have done to this kid is what they have been doing to a lot of people. But sometimes something like this needs to happen before more people will open their eyes. Today, Bia is fighting in Paris. But he lives behind a burning house. Okay? A burning house. The Anglophone problem, Bia has not had time to solve it. Ambazonia is burning. Okay? And soon, the fire burning in Ambazonia would engulf the Francophone regions. I've said this many times, and people keep watching me. Watch. Because you look. This week in Ambazonia, what happened? They were able to burn a military post in Bui. They were, um... General Capo is dead. General Capo is not dead. He's still commanding his guys and wreaking havoc. Then the Mbororo people, just like you have the problem in Nigeria between farmers and cattle herders, we are having the same problem in Ambazonia between the Mbororo people and the natives. The natives do not want the Mbororo people to use their land as grazing ground. They want them to restrict the grazing in a particular area. They don't support Mbororo people just coming to every place and running around with their cattle. They don't like that. So this is creating a problem. Okay? So that's what we see in La Republique du Cameroon. The same problem that we see in La Republique du Cameroon, you see it in Djibouti. In Djibouti, you have Ismail Omar Gouele. He's a Sittai dictator who has been there forever. He's very old, he's very sick, yet he doesn't want to leave. <laughs> They want to buy a Kotra Guinea. A Kotra Guinea is the same problem. Theodoro Obiangema, he wants his son to succeed him. He doesn't want to leave, he wants to die in power. A Kotra Guinea discovered oil. America turned a blind eye on the dictatorship in that country. But things have gotten worse. Things have gotten worse. Theodoro killed his uncle to become president. You would think that he would do something for the country, but things are They've just been squandering the resources of that country. You see his son, the playboy, wasting the money of the country. And that's the person you want to leave the country with, right? <laughs> then, of course, Gabon. $25,000 to $250,000 per year made easy. Do you dream about making big money? Well, we all do. Imagine joining pharmacy professionals to earn good money. Statistics show that the big pharma industry rules and controls America like a colossus. Do you want to find more details about the hidden gem? Join the Pharmacy Success Crew now. Become a pharmacy professional today. Let us train you as pharmacy techs, foreign pharmacy graduates, USA pharmacy students. Learn to earn. We offer affordable online and offline programs. Act now. Browse our website for details pharmacyprof.com or call 301-760-0335. Gabon is having elections in August 2025. Even though Olingi uh, Brice uh, Ngema has not said it, he's going to stand for re-election. And of course, who will win? He controls the apparatus of state. So he's going to win. Because in Africa, when you control the apparatus of state, nobody can really uh, contest the election with you. Even when you lose, you just say, I've won. You have the gun. You can shoot anybody who opens his mouth. You're running the country like uh, a gang. So most of these guys in Africa are gangsters, okay? Gangsters. Olingi Ngema is not uh, a revolutionary. Unlike the guy we have in Burkina Faso, 
Ibrahim Traore, Asimi Goita in Mali, General Abdurrahman Tiani in Niger. No. Gabon has a colonial guy who is keeping the throne for the French. He's a caretaker. He's not a revolutionary. Okay? But in Ivory Coast, you have Alassane Ouattara. That's another sit-tight president. He's been looking for all type of excuses to stay in power forever. He was one of his lackeys, his slaves, who erupted during the meeting of ECOWAS, which you guys sent me the videos and you were very, very angry. Okay? Alassane doesn't want to go anywhere. He's also ex expending all the resources of the country. What is he going to do next? He doesn't want to leave, so he will die in power. So even though he's old, he doesn't want to go anywhere. And of course, in Niger, we know that a colonial leader has been taken out. At least you guys are happy for, for that, right? But it looks like Orano, the French firm, is going bankrupt because they have withdrawn a lot of their permits. They cannot continue mining in Niger. And France needs these resources desperately. So they are really punishing France. Okay? Mohamed Bazoum is still held in custody. So things are tough. He's trying to accept his condition, but things are tough. Next, we we'll take it to Nigeria. Nigeria is another example where you have a sit tight president. You ask me, Bola Tinibu, I'm not saying that he was not uh, elected democratically, but where is the democracy? He basically bought his way uh, to power. If not of money, Bola Tinibu will not be the president of Nigeria. But he's very old and he's very sick. You see pictures all over the place. The frailty of the guy, you've seen him collapse many times in public, right? I'm not the one saying it. You Nigerians, you've seen it. His age is a problem. He doesn't have the stamina to be president. But he's, oh, it's my turn, it's my turn. I have to be president, and I will run again until I win for eight years. Come on. You want to be president. What do you want to do with the presidency? Most of the time, people show me pictures of Bola Tinibu sleeping. The guy is tired. The guy <laughs> doesn't have any clue what's going on. Yet, he wants to be president. So this is another example. Can you not learn lesson from Joe Biden? That's a question most of the viewers are asking me. Prince Ojong, ask them. Can you not learn lesson from Joe Biden, Bola Tinibu? Then now he doesn't want the youth to go out and protest against him. Now they are trying to bribe the youth with uh, token jobs in the oil industry. The youth have been looking for jobs for many years, but it, they gave them no jobs. Now they are saying, oh no, we're going to give you jobs. Don't protest. We're going to give you jobs soon. Okay. Then, of course, Rwanda. Tired of waiting in long lines at the emergency room or your doctor's office? You should be. Why wait in long lines for care? It's time for you to come to Lucille Urgent Care. Real care, no waiting. Lucille Urgent Care, the best place for true and loving care. Service at Lucille Urgent Care is convenient, fast, time efficient, affordable, accessible, transparent, and cost effective. Real treatment is your right. Indeed, it's not just a privilege or pejorative. Skip the emergency room's long lines, kiss the ER goodbye, say farewell to your old doctor's office, pay less, save time, enjoy the excitement of convenience, receive immediate treatment, get the health care you need quickly and affordably. Lucille Urgent Care offers many express services, rapid COVID-19 testing, on-site prescription, preventative lab services, imaging and x-rays, urgent medical treatment for common illnesses and injuries, routine vaccines and flu shots, work-related injury services, pre-employment, occupational, annual, and sports physicals, immigration exams, and much more. Same-day treatment, rapid lab results, extended hours, weekend hours, no appointment necessary, no insurance necessary, no doctor necessary, walk-ins accepted, telemedicine available. We are open seven days a week with evening and weekend hours. We are located in Maryland, Lucille Urgent Care, 903 Half York Road, Towson, Maryland, 21204. Website, lucilleuc.com. Call at 443-275-1286 or 301-593-4897. In Rwanda, you have another case of a sit tight dictator. It's true, Paul Kagame has done a lot to help the country since the genocide of 1994. But a professor of mine, George Bernard Ayite, once said, 
There's no such thing as a good dictator. All dictators are bad. So those who want to give a pass to Paul Kagame, I feel sorry for them. He has just won another election again. And he always wins with at least 91.2%. Uh -uh! Paul Kagame, the winner. Chai, you can win, old boy. <laughs> Papa, you can exaggerate. But you see, you think that he is running without opposition. There's a lot of opposition. But the opposition is hell at bay. There are two guys who are Frank uh, Hibiniza and the other guy, Philippe, who are opposition uh, party guys. But they don't give them the voice. They don't give them the platform to express themselves. So when you go to Rwanda, you will not even know that two other guys are running for president. The only person who is running for president is Paul Kagame. So do you wonder why Kagame will win 91.2% of the vote? Because he controls the apparatus of state. He uses it to campaign, and he silences the opposition. This guy is making another mockery of democracy. So, sit tight, President Paul Kagame. Nobody is telling you anything else. We're telling you, learn from Joe Biden. You are not indispensable. No matter how good you are, when you die, that the country lives on. Don't get into the point of thinking that you are special, you are exceptional. Without you, Rwanda will move on, okay? So don't deceive yourself. Togo. Togo is another country where you have sit tight president. Since the killing of Silvanus Olympio, the guy who really shepherded Togo into independence, a London School of Economics graduate who could have helped this country develop, but a French puppet, that Nyasingwe Eyadema, took over the country, killed uh, Silvanus Olympio. Then after that, his son took over, and his son has stayed there with French support. You see why people hate the French? Because France is supporting all these bad dictators in Africa. They sit tight. They don't want to go anywhere. Then what about Uganda? Ho, 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 ho. You're wearing Museveni. That's another bad case. This is another sit tight dictator example. This week, when the opposition decided that they're going to protest, then the youth decided they're going to go to the parliamentary building, you worry Museveni sent his thugs to go and beat, imprison, and kill them. And you can see a lot of those pictures. This is what he's doing. It's not today. Look at Bobby Wine, the opposition guy. This guy has been beaten so many times. It's only God that has made it possible for him not to die. Bobby Wine should have been killed. Because he's always protesting. And Yoweri Museveni sends his people and thugs to beat him up. We want to move from Uganda to Zimbabwe. In Zimbabwe, we have Emerson Nangagwa. He also is another sit tight uh, dictator. They used to call him the crocodile because he was the enforcer during the reign of Robert Mugabe. They killed a lot of people, threw them in the sea, did terrible things to people. Yet, he too, I want to be president. You want to be president for what? Now he's president and he doesn't have any clue on what to do. The ec economy of Zimbabwe is in free fall, he cannot even help this economy. Then why is he president? You ask me, I don't know what to tell you. So these old people who break constitutional rules, look for all types of tricks to stay in power. They are the problem of Africa. And that's what the young people are saying. The young people have had enough. They've had enough. So they are telling the truth. So if you don't want to hear the truth, that's your problem. So when you have coup d'etat, don't blame anybody. Coup d'etats are a result of bad governance. But the sad thing in Africa is most of these sit tight African presidents are killing, kidnapping, whistleblowers, and critics. So what can you learn from the Olympic Games? The Olympic Games tells you that we need to start going back to the drawing board. Instead of having banana republic of zombies, we need to have real republic in light of what the philosopher Plato presented in the Republic. We need to have a country where there is justice, because that's the main goal of any Republic, justice. You have to build a country using the foundation of justice. Then the president must be philosopher kings. When they say philosopher kings, it means that they are not just benevolent kings. They are kings who think 
they think about the good of their country. But will African presidents ever learn? Has Biden taught African presidents any lessons? You tell us. Watch this video, share, and comment, and comment, and comment, and comment. Thank you. Do you need tax preparation services? We can help. Contact PJ Tax Service, America's only full-time income tax preparers. Like the good old doctor, we do not close our doors after April 15th. In fact, we stay open all year round in order to serve you. We are located at 11207A Lockwood Drive, Silver Spring, Maryland, 20901. Make an appointment today with Prince Ojong, your tax expert. Call 240-350-1131 or visit us on the web at www.pjtaxservice.com. Selling a service or a product? Need buyers? Use the African Nation TV as a channel to reach many viewers. Act now and call Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. That's 240-350-1131. Act today.